of what I'm looking at right here. This scares me more than looking at the trailer for a horror movie. <laughs> it, it really does. I mean, for one, some of the image in, images in here scare me. I do not want to live in a future where all the buildings look like Michael Shannon <laughs> Pez dispensers. <laughs> 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 dtmerch.com has our mainstay items. It has the limited edition shirts in there, but we also have some favorites. One of our other most popular selling shirts, the black cotton tee with the white logo. But we have the Sidekick 3000 still up in there. Got jerseys, hats, phone covers, and many more things. Those sexy ass subscription over on doubletoasted.com. And over there, you can bring your credit card and many other things to help support these fine live streaming shows we have for you. But the main thing that I want you to recognize here is that you have an Amazon account. I start to say Prime. No, you just have an Amazon playing old account. But we have something special for you. We have an Amazon pay button. Combine those things, enter your username, your password in there, press in, and oh, that's where our sexiness and your body comes in because we just pour all that toasty goodness all over you. I need to cut this fan on because it's about to get hot up in here. About to talk about that Fahrenheit, that Fahrenheat, 451 degrees. Now, let me see what we got here. Trailer dropped today. And it's for somebody known for quality out there, putting out a lot of great entertainment. So people say, I know this is going to be good. And we're talking about HBO. HBO is doing an adaptation of the classic sci-fi dystopian future novel Fahrenheit 451 written by the great the late great science fiction author Ray Bradbury uh, there have been versions of this before we'll talk about that in a little while but people are saying you know what for a book that was written years ago this feels pretty relevant right now frighteningly relevant but also got some people in there that I just saw, and even though this scares me, I don't like it. I do love one sex-ass man up in here. Mm -hmm. And, oh, who is that? Who who we have in here? Well, you might recon recognize a lead actor here, along with some other talents, for HBO's latest adaptation of Fahrenheit 451. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer, and we'll be back to give our reaction. <clears throat> have you ever seen a physical book before? Oh, because he's black. Do you want to know? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> what you say? I can't read. <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> we are not born equal, so we must be made equal by the fire. I want to burn. Damn, how much... <laughs> Who was that heart shape oh, earned? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about to say, how much stuff is brother gonna burn? Right now? <laughs> yeah, he like was he, just what well, he wants to be the human torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just one more chance, I can do it right yeah. this time. Yeah. He, he burned himself. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to burn that panther. <laughs> burn it all. <laughs> They're like, now you trying to <laughs> he burning books now? <laughs> I want to burn. I mean, looking like a true pyro right here. It's like <laughs> keep that brother away from the matches when he come in the room. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it is. Michael B. Jordan, if, if you're listening. And uh, you might have also heard Michael Shannon. That's uh, one of my favorite actors also. That was the sexy man you were talking about, right? Of course, man. Okay, Michael oh, Shannon. Oh, them big old sexy eyes. Yeah. You're into fish eyes. <laughs> <Yeah. and laughs> <laughs> if you're into Frankenstein monster fish eye people, then you... <laughs> you know, I feel like Michael Shannon's watching this show right now. There's just one tear going down. That's why no, they keep his eyes are on. out and going <laughs> in different directions. Yeah. This, this movie, or this book, is so relevant. It touches on so many social issues that feel like it happens in cycles throughout time that uh, it just feels brand new every time somebody makes a version of it because that was 1953 when that book was made. Uh, there was a movie that was made in 1966, as you can see, starring Julie Christie and uh, Oscar Werner. And as you can see at that time, that movie had somewhat of a different feel to it. Uh, here's a little clip right here uh, telling you a little bit of what the movie is about. Fahrenheit 451 is a temperature at which book paper catches fire and starts to burn. I'd like to ask you something else, Sonny. I don't really dare. As you can see, this is action-packed. <laughs> <laughs> it just questions the whole movie. Yeah, the movie is just being going on a tender day right now. <laughs> Where are we? Yeah. What does the title of this book yeah. mean? Yeah. <laughs> so well. tell me, what do you do? <laughs> uh, you heard a little bit about 
what this story is uh, what, what this story is about uh, from the the previous trailer, the, the recent trailer, and a little bit from this clip. Uh, it's all about book burning, not wanting to spread knowledge around, uh, not wanting to empower people, but take that power away from them in many ways, some by the hands of the, the citizens and, uh, and the population themselves. Uh, and, and, and speaking of that, this is that's what I'm talking about. This is not just a movie. This, uh, you know, looking at that trailer, I know it's short. It's almost a teaser. It's a minute long. Mm -hmm. It's not just a movie when this comes out from what I've seen. This is a warning of what I'm looking at right here. This scares me more than looking at the trailer for a horror movie. <laughs> it, it really does. I mean, for one, some of the image in, images in here scare me. I do not want to live in a future where all the buildings look like Michael Shannon <laughs> Pez dispensers. <Yeah. laughs> you know? I'm watching you I'm Coleman. watching you, them big ass eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, 100 feet wide. I see everything. Yeah, yeah you're like, you think my eyes are big now? That's yeah. a nice book you're reading. <laughs> oh. Yeah, now, you know, like I said, that this, this scares me more than anything. I seen a horror movie uh, because it reminds me of the world that we're living in right now. You want to frighten me? That's why I'm not scared of the supernatural, you know. You have real people doing real damage and real harm. That frightens me. Uh, I will say that, first of all, looking at this, they managed to do a good job with the production, I think. I want to get your opinion on that. Be and that's another thing that makes us feel grounded more in our time. Now, I, I will also say that they do a good job at, ma at making this look futuristic. But I don't know if it's budget limitations or, or, if, uh, or if they've meant to be intentionally, but, you know, it's not too futuristic. It's, uh, you know, it's just enough to hold the mirror up to ourselves and reflect uh, what we see in our own world, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, and, you know, and I, and I like that. I like when, uh, you know, the, uh, the, fu the future is not too futuristic sometimes with good science fiction. No spaceships flying around, you know. Yeah, no flying cars. I get you. No flying cars, you know, nothing like but that. But it's still, it's still very Blade Runner slick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean... I, I feel like they've taken a simple story and they've made it the visuals too sexy just to like, well, we got to bring the kids in somehow. And I'm like, I, I feel like it doesn't require all this. That kind of takes me out of it, actually. Really? Yeah. I, and just the, them yelling at each other and I want to burn and all that. It's, it's a bit overblown and dramatic. It, it, it borders on being silly to me. I don't feel like for that he's probably just trying to defend himself like oh you hiding books or something like that like no i want really i really want to destroy things so that's probably why he did that but i like the way it looks um i enjoy the way they had that that michael shannon flying over the city staring at everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh even like when they showed that the uh that advertisement <laughs> <laughs> it was like a michael shannon theme park going on. <laughs> Oh, no. It's just hey, a bunch of people in, dressed like Michael Shannon mascots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking to Michael Shannon land. You will have fun, goddammit. It. It, it just feels like, it feels derivative of Blade Runner. I immediately thought of Blade Runner 2049 when I saw it. Except, really? Except it looks like a cheap version of Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> where I'm like, ooh. And like, and the, it, the parking lot version of it? Yeah. yeah. It's like the sci-fi version of it on the sci-fi channel. I don't want to see this shit. Well, see, the reason why I, I let that shit pass, man, is because, like, Blade Runner takes place in a lot of movies, like, when they try to do this, it always ends up taking place in a dystopian future. Like, in Blade Runner, the crops are dead and everything's dying. Like, this mm -hmm. one, like, the world's still going on. It's just yeah. more future stuff. So I can understand seeing massive billboards. It's just like a bigger version of Tokyo. Yeah. And I, you know what? And I tell you, I, uh, you say you, it looks too slick. There's a reason for that, I believe. Because, uh, and I know, you know, and there, there, there's, a, I'll tell you one thing that bothers me about the production that does not make me look at what I see here, like the, the, the cityscape and the buildings, does not make me nitpick on that. Because there is something in here that, that, that does get to me. And this is starting to get to me with a lot of movies and TV shows. Uh, I hate it where we, I'm, I'm really getting tired of it, where in the future, um, you know, every corporate building, our every government building has turned into the Guggenheim Museum. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, it's so dark in here. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, everything has got like, like these winding artistic steps. And and this is HBO. And the way I look at this, like you see Michael Jordan going up these stairs, and I'm like, man, this is why y'all saving money, because y'all just went over to the set of Westworld and shot this. <laughs> Yo. you know, while it was on his off season, everybody was on vacation, y'all just went over there. Y'all probably sneaked over there and shot it's this. Easy set, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, when I look at this, I like the slickness of it because uh, it's showing you that it's, uh, it's a world that has become so slick that people are being 
they're being uh, distracted. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I'm talking about. This is why this is scary to me, because this is about uh, oppression of people and the dumbing down of people, a, a war on intellectualism, just a war on just, be, just being informed, right. you know, sure. just average, you know, just, just average information. And what's scary about it to me is the way the, the trailer points out that the government ain't got to try that hard. It's distracting. Like, I'm looking to hear that one shot where people, they're all watching, like right there, virtual reality, which that makes me not even want to have virtual reality because I tell you, <laughs> I know, I know, but you know what? I just took that right there to see how stupid you look with them big old blue blockers on. <laughs> right there. I've been trying to tell you this shit for like three years. <laughs> well, it took Michael B. George to let me know. I see. Hey, <laughs> kill Mario to let me know right there. You know, all you people with these big ass old people glasses on, mm -hmm. waving their hands, but that shows you that Technology is distracting us yeah. while the government is taking, like, and I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, it does kind of feel real that we're just content to be, you know, like now, right now with our phones, just soaked into this, the, the internet, mm -hmm. you know, social media, our phones, uh, and this is hinting towards that. Also, uh, oppression brought, uh, brought on by the powers that be by just, and this is what I've been saying for a while, maybe that's why I relate to this here, uh, by patriotism, this yeah. false patriotism. Yeah, you I thought know, that that shot where he walked by that uh, the hologram and had the American eagle saying, "If you see something, say something." That giant ass eagle right there. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> say something. What you looking at, homie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He see us mugging him down. Right yeah. now. What you see something? <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> yeah, that's one of the biggest things um, that that especially with this book and this uh, this movie that I feel like they're gonna take that thing because I think one of the scariest things is not being watched by the government. It's being watched by your own neighbors who are gonna sure. dime you out to the government. So that, I think that's a little bit more fearful and we've seen this used in uh, other movies before like like uh, equilibrium and book of eli and things like that yeah yeah man you know I, it's it's scary to me to look at a world that kind of looks that is hinting at where we're going and very close to it and seeing how they're showing that at, this is the time where this is you know okay it's it, it's not what it is as you see in this movie but there are seeds being laid for it uh you know people are just it's almost like now people are consciously choosing to dumb themselves down all because they're told that we're not telling you to do it. You're being told to do that because it's for your sense of duty for your country. Mm -hmm. If you love your country, then you will be stupid. <laughs> and, you know, and, they, and they do it right here. Look at the flags. You know, or like over here, you got the, uh, you know, the, the American flags and neon over here on these tall buildings. Uh, you know, it looks, it looks to me like that false patriotism is going to be a big theme in this. Uh, I'm interested, but not particularly excited, if that, if that makes sense. I'm like, this could be cool, uh, mainly just because of the cast. I like Michael B. Jordan, and I like Michael Shannon yeah. a lot, and most everything I see mm -hmm. him in. I think we're kind of living in this era now, in a way, so heightening it in this futuristic setting, I feel like it almost kind of dilutes the power because it adds a degree of separation. So I could see myself possibly having an issue with that. Mm -hmm. But I am interested in seeing this. For okay. Sure. Do you not think if it was set in like present day and they didn't have all the future stuff, you'd be like, well, let's. I think that's where the, the separation will come in because it's like, all right, that's present day and I don't see people burning books. Like we still don't really have a problem with that. that share of information going on we have a lot of fake information right. going on but we don't have a problem with burning like legit things and getting rid of truth maybe it's just too much like we're seeing like giant holograms and stuff that that it might just be too much where and also literally just like right off the heels of blade runner yeah that might be throwing me off a little bit too i'm just happy it didn't go like what martin said where it could have been just like <laughs> like minority report where everything yeah. was like super shiny and super slick yeah. like that's a problem yeah but like this yeah. has, it has dark turn uh, uh i'm sorry dark tones and it looks like uh <coughs> from what i can tell that's chicago um it looks like all right this is a city i recognize with a couple of extra twists on top of it which i could see happening in the next 10 years I see your point, but let me address two things that you said, first of all. Okay. Uh, one, you are right. I love uh, the cast in here. Everybody knows, I, I mean, look, we only <laughs> talk about Michael Shannon because we really do love Michael Shannon. Of Michael course. Shannon does. Michael Shannon is is an amazing actor. And, and you know, I'm just going to put on this picture of, of Shannon Land. Right <laughs> you having <laughs> fun? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, Michael, my, uh, Michael Shannon, uh, I love him in everything he does. Of course, he really excels in intimidating roles. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's great in everything. I've seen him in all kind of good guy roles, him got bad guy roles. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to what he does here. But Michael Shannon's been on the scene for a while, and everybody knows that. We kind of take for granted that Michael Shannon's going to be good, whatever, whatever he's in. 
Michael B. Jordan, on the other hand, I'm glad to see him getting more roles at this point because he was so great in Creed, uh, Creed Jr. He was so great as Killmonger, the, the villainous Killmonger in, ba in Black Panther. Um, he's shown that he is, you know, more than just a handsome lead. He really has power behind his performances. And I'm thinking that getting these lead roles is going to do for him what needs to be done, and that is expand his range. The other thing I want to address right here with you is uh, that's the reason why you're saying we, we hear this now and it's, we're living it, but that's what I'm saying. It's like a, we're living this, and a lot of people, they just don't really comprehend anything unless it's given to them through entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people just, they don't, they, you know, they, we're, we're frogs boiling in water right now. You know, we just don't see it unless there's a, on, on something that we can't consume, well, a okay. screen we get it from. Entertainment is great for being a Trojan horse. Yeah. To, to get into, to get to people who would normally would just, if you told them the straight facts, they would go like, ah. Yeah. But you give it to them in entertainment, they're entertained, and then like, oh, damn, I learned something. How'd that happen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I totally agree with Gertz's point that making it in the future, it gives people some, that level of separation where they can go like, well, that's that's in that future though. That's not that's not gonna. But be would us. you say the same thing about the book though? Because the book was it's set in the future, but it was going on during McCarthyism. But people still got the same analogy. Well, smart people read. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> well, that was the only form of, one of the the cheapest forms of entertainment at the time was to read. But it was yeah. it was a much more popular form as opposed to now, where right. all entertainment is is competing with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I don't don't think I'm butting heads with you guys. I see what you're saying. I just you know, and you just don't know. I, I maybe I, I have more faith in people. Uh, which is not much if it takes, you know, fictional characters to tell you that. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 maybe I just have hope. Like, if, if reality don't, it can't get it through your thick skull, then maybe Killmonger and Zod need to tell you <laughs> what's really <laughs> happening. Maybe, maybe you listen to them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's up to the villains to, yeah. to, to show us the way. <laughs> yeah. I said, I don't know, man. Maybe we just, maybe we really do need to, like, put Michael Shannon's head on every building right there. And maybe we didn't give Zod a chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe we need to do that now. He would have destroyed less buildings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Some people say Zod's in the White House right now. <laughs>